Hi everyone. Once again, welcome to the Gwinnett Technologies. And today lecture is going to be very interesting, right? We are doing the you know uh, understanding and the complete knowledge about the G-scalar architectures, G-scalar you know Internet Explorer platform architectures. So till now we understand about the elements of the G-scalar. We understand about the you know uh, control plane. We understand the data plane. We understand about the statistics plane. We understand all the parameters, what is the central authority, what is the like user communication is going to happen with the gen and then how central authority come in a picture and how gen is going to uh, process the data, right? And also we understand the logs, uh, like nano log cluster, nano log routers, how they're going to compress the logs, right? And how you can even the stream your logs to your on-premises, like by using the tool Splunk and other tools also, right? So we all understand. And additionally, we understand in the previous session, like reporting data privacy, how it is going to happen, how reporting is very important. Even you are just getting the logs, but even that logs are also going with the zero trust exchange and they just have to prove their identity, then only you get the logs. Now, today we are going to discuss again with the G scalar traffic flow. This is the very key component, right? So let, let me just you know maximize this screen. So what is the G scalar traffic flow, right? Swap security traffic flow. Right. So let's understand in this way. You are the user, right? You are here. Just think in this way. You are here. You are here. This is the user, right? This is having a laptop. So very first step, this user, right? This user must, you know, authenticate themselves, right? Because we understand in the previous section, authentication is the first, you know, parameter. Without authentication, you cannot do that anything. So your authentication should be happen in first place. Like you can say SAML, RDP authentication. So similar, user must be authenticated. If user is not going to be authenticated, probably you not do anything. This is the first criteria, right? And uh, then only we can go with the any kind of the packet processing. So let's suppose user might be authenticated with the SAML. So just think about this is a SAML and they just authenticated based on the you know, connection they instituted. So once authentication is done, the first step for the user is going to be provide the TCP client TCP connections. This is the first thing, right? They will just reach out to Jen, nearest Jen. And after reaching to nearest Jen, they will just going to be provide the TCP client authentic like uh, TCP connections. So TCP connection is going to be allocated. Still, we are talking about the control information, not data forwarding. Still, user authenticated but still they are not going to process the data. So once they have the TCP client connection available for the user point of view, then again, they have to get the connection ID. Without connection ID, your packet cannot be processed throughout the gen. So your connection ID must be allocated. So connection tracking is going to happen based on the central authority information, right? The TCP connection is going to be, you know, like a session is created, now they just allocated the connection ID to you. And then based on your user ID, your location ID, your policy, they all things are going to be enforced. Like what kind of the policy you have, what kind of the access you know to allow, from which location you are coming. So according to location, what the you know different different policy set need to be applied, what the firewall, cloud firewall, web filtering, everything. And similar to the user ID. So let's say, once you're done with the everything, like your authentication done, your connection tracking has been allocated and connection ID has been allocated, right? So now you are starting your actual data forwarding. But whenever you start the data forwarding, right? So whenever you start a data forwarding, that again, actual data, whenever you're forwarding, that never going to write in disk. They always going to process in the memory. G scalar data always going to process in memory with you know two words, which is 64 bits words, right? It's two words if you're having the computer knowledge and something. So they're basically going to use to you know some uh, memory where you just have to write the you know actual data. And by using this data, your data request is forwarded further, going to be forwarded for the various section, right? So you you just send the data. So let me just go here. So you just send the data. Data is going to be, you know, land to the, let me just clear. So 
I don't know what happened. So leave it. So data is going to be, you know, land from the user point of view and they are going to be, you know, reached here. Request data and then your connection ID is always going to along with your data packets. Now you have to process with a different, different, you know, scanning process because your data is processing. So data might be having the malware. You having the URL class that should be allowed or might be blocked. You having some threat prevention, so data might not having any trends. You having a data leak preven uh, prevention applicable, bandwidth application, file type, which file type you are just trying to upload, download, right? So those scanning is going to happen, and based on the results, if all the scans success, then you move to next step. If anything fail, you will get the block response page. You will get the block response page, right? You are not authorized to go for the next step. You got my point. So in the first step, user might be authenticated. If authenticated, then only process. If not authenticated, it is going to not allow to send the traffic. We having a separate session when no authentication is allowed. We'll discuss more about that. But if you are authenticated, you're sending the data, your scan result are getting failed for some reason. Might be they having a threats. You are leaking some data, which is not as per the company organization policy, then again, you are going to be get the block response. You are not allowed to go further. But let's say, suppose you passed everything. You move to the next step. Again, your connection tracking ID will be remain same, but the policy check is going to be happen. Actually, likewise, the Palo Alto firewall policy, right? Your Cisco ASC firewall policy check. But similar policy we can build in the Gscaler. What is the URL class that is actually allowed? Might be I'm blocking for the ed any adult URL, any any kind of the I can say gambling URL, games URL, any kind of dating site URLs. So those are allowed or not? If allowed, then you can go. If not allowed, you can block. If you, if you are accessing the URL, URL, any app might be the Facebook app you are accessing, might be the WhatsApp app. These are allowed or not? If not allowed, you can again get the block response. Any threat again, threat is going to be checked. Based on the policy, DLP bandwidth file type, again, all are going to be checked. These are the policy checks. Once everything is going to be passed again, so your connection is going to be established with the servers. Might be you are just accessing with the Google, your 55, Workday, Sales, Salesforce, YouTube, Amazon, anything you are just going to, then your connection is going to be established. Outbound connection means in to out connection is going to be established. And the same time, what is happening if the response is going to happen from the uh, server side? So again, when the server send the response, right? That you having the response data means the traffic, reverse traffic, the response traffic, TCP server connection, right? Connection ID is allocated again from the gen point of view. And then again, the connection ID is going to do again, scan checks. Like whatever the file might be, you just go to the Google and try to download some virus, right? Or any file which having the virus, like you just want to doc file, Excel file, right? Excel file. So those files might be having a virus, vulnerability or PDF, any, any, any type of file you're downloading. So again, the scan is going to happen. And if a scan having a threat, any bandwidth related issue, any file type you are blocking, any kind of the DCCC. So anything is going to happen that all, uh, like uh, that is going to be blocked and there's not going to be reply, okay? So you'll get the block response immediately if this is going to fail. So you will get the block response. Any point of view, even here also get the block response, here also get the block response, here also get the block response. And then policy check, if it is failed, then again, it will get the block response. So either, either of the cases, he is going to get the block response. Now, if you success policy check, say successfully, you have done the policy check successfully, then your connection you know, uh, will be the process and will get the, success rate and the user get the page response. So you can see the life cycle of the packet. It is always going to <clears throat> check each and every aspect. Even you are just creating the, you know, any communication from user point of view, they must be authenticated. Then HTTP get request is going to be sent. And once HTTP get request for the actual data transfer. So here HTTP get request is going to be sent. HTTP get. And then HTTP get request is going to send then that, that means you're requesting the data for the servers. Then your all scan is going to be applied to you. All policy enforcement is going to happen. Then you make the connection and the same reply is going to happen. Again, 
scan is mandatory again policy is mandatory again based on the your response it's a block or allow you'll get the response so this is how your traffic forwarding method is available in the like uh, g scaler like this is the traffic forwarding method but still we having a lot of things to understand in the traffic forwarding method which i explain one by one in the upcoming sessions right but if you someone is going to ask what what is the you know uh, traffic forwarding method like traffic flow in the g scaler so we can easily communicate this all right but later stage we will discuss about more about like traffic forwarding methods and all single pass and multi scan how it is going to work but for timing i believe we are good how web security traffic flow is going to happen in g scaler so you just have to know about the forwarding traffic outbound traffic and inbound traffic this is a response page and based on that you understand how a scanning is going to happen how the policy is going to be checked how the tcp server connection is going to happen and then when the response is going to come then what is going to happen so i hope this is going to be you know very much clear for you for any kind of the traffic flow of the g scaler like with the polo auto we having a traffic flow other file also having a traffic flow similar we having the traffic flow for the g scaler so thank you so much for watching and i will see and discuss more about the next video thank you so much